Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Bill, this is Yo-Yo Tech. Today we're gonna take a minute and we're gonna talk about... Today we are going to talk about home automation and audio. We'll be right back. So guys, um, thanks so much for all of your support. The community has been growing. If you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to do so down below. Uh, if you're enjoying these videos and you happen to know someone who may be interested, uh, your social networks, your friends, your family, feel free to share this with them. Uh, trying to grow the community and would love any new subscribers uh, that come along. It obviously helps motivate and uh, helps support this channel. So uh, yeah, share away. So guys, today we're gonna to look at home audio from an automation point of view, but if you're interested in some more high-end audio or really understanding some of the basics of amplifiers, receivers, headphones, really good music, I'm gonna link a site below. I've been learning a lot from him. His name is Chana. He runs a site called Technodad. Really cool name, I like it. Link should be down below, should be floating somewhere up here, but definitely check out Technodad. A lot of great information there. I've been learning a lot from watching his videos. So um, when you get a chance and you wanna know more about audio, head over there. So guys, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about audio. Audio is something that in home automation is super simple to do and it just fits in with your life. Um, most people listen to music all the time, so using something like Sonos or Chromecast Audio is an easy way to uh, add that ambience music to your house, your whole house music. Uh, you can set up certain rules to play music at certain times of the day. When you come home at night, turn it on, put on some quieter, lighter music during the weekends, have different music. This is a Sonos speaker. And for those of you who don't know, this is the Sonos One. Um, there's actually a newer version that was just released this week that has built-in uh, Alexa integration, so it can have voice control right in the speaker. These recently have uh, partnered with Alexa, so you can now control them from any of your Alexa speakers in the house. So that's fantastic new offering with it. Um, and to be honest, they're my favorite home audio speaker and I use them for all my home automation. One of the great things about the Sonos speaker is the fact that you can take it and build your system up one speaker at a time. Now they're not the cheapest speakers in the world, uh, but when you take into account that this is all you need, you don't need an amplifier, you don't need anything else, you just need this little speaker and you can add them one by one by one around your house for different purposes in different areas. So this is the smallest, this is the Sonos one. Um, and this can actually be used, these can be paired together to make a stereo pair in the future if you want. You can actually do that with the bigger ones as well, but what a lot of people will do is use these as their rear speakers in a 5.1 setup, or maybe you wanna have a stereo pair in a room, you can put two of them together and pair them together and you'll get the left and right channels coming through them. And to be honest, I use mostly these around the house because I find that they have enough sound and, and bass to fill a room. Um, and they're really good for, for daily sound. Now, I do have a few others around the house, including the Sonos Play Bar, uh, which is their sound bar, and I also have some Play 3s and Play 5s, which ultimately are just bigger versions of this speaker. So the technology on the back end is all the same across the whole line, but the, the number of speakers, tweeters, woofers inside of them just increases as you go to the different models. So really, if you're setting this up, that plays no difference. And the nice thing is I started with these even in some of the rooms where I would rather have had a bigger one. But the beauty was is I could buy this and then as I could afford it, I bought newer, bigger ones and just moved these or relocated them to different rooms to add across my house. When you're working with home audio, uh, no matter what system it's gonna be, if it can be controlled remotely, it adds a lot of really cool things. So you can look at doing notifications through there. So for example, when I turn my alarm system on at night, um, it can notify me if there's anything wrong. I can have rules that say, hey, Bill, the garage door is still open. I have different rules that I can fire off. It's super easy to add voice notifications into it and you can actually target one or multiple speakers throughout your house uh, to let you know about these things. So if you are in the basement and someone rings your doorbell, you can have your Sonos speaker play a, play a sound or you can have it make an announcement that somebody's at the door, really whatever you wanna do. Um, and to do this, I'm gonna show you some really simple rules down below. Now, I also use the streaming service TuneIn Radio. 
Um, and this lets me play just normal radio stations that we would listen to around the house, which is nice because no matter how much you want to listen to streaming music, uh, every once in a while you want to be able to hear just some local news and local music. So that was also an important reason why I chose the Sonos speakers. So there are other solutions out there and a lot of people, a lot of people I know use Bluetooth and stuff like that. Bluetooth is, is not my favorite solution and that's simply because typically you have to be playing from a device to the other device. So if you were streaming music, it would come down to your phone. Your phone would essentially send it via Bluetooth to the speakers and they play. Now the obvious problem with this is if you walk away, you take your phone with you and we've all been there where you're getting a little bit too far away and all of a sudden the audio starts cutting out and you're wondering what's going on. So you gotta get your phone back, you gotta leave it there, which obviously isn't good if you leave the house completely to go out, you, your music stops playing. So for me, although Bluetooth can sometimes be simple, it's just not a good solution. The only downfall with the Sonos speakers is that currently Google Home does not work with that, but there is a little workaround I've come up with. The Sonos 5 for sure, um, and the Sonos Amp have audio inputs on them. So you can actually plug in another audio source and when that starts playing, uh, it'll stream that through around the house. So what I've done is I've actually plugged a Chromecast audio, uh, which is the little receiver dongle for audio for Chromecast. I've plugged that into the input on my Play 5 and I've made that input source so that I can actually use Google Home to control the music. So by asking Google to play music or news or whatever you might want to hear, you can output that through your Sonos system as well. So it's a little bit of a hack right now and I think that full support is planned and coming soon, but uh, it is a workaround right now if you wanna work with Sonos and go that way. I have some rules that when I come home at night, uh, automatically turn the audio on, um, different sources, different times of day, I will uh, automatically have it turn on to the radio, but if it's late at night, I might have the volume lower. If it's really late at night, I don't have it turn on. Uh, in the morning, if it's after a certain time, when we get up and we turn off the alarm, I have it turn on automatically. And I also have this work where it pairs certain speakers together and it kind of, the preset mode for the house has them playing that way. Obviously throughout the day, people use their phones and they'll change that around manually or the tablet. Um, and so when you wake up in the morning or when you come home and the house alarm has been on, you want it to automatically reset and go back to normal. You wanna make sure the volumes go back. There's nothing worse than coming home and opening a door and, and having the, the audio turn on and be blaring loud because whoever used it last had it loud. Uh, or first thing in the morning, you wanna wake up and boom, the thing goes on loud. So you can set all your volumes, you can set your pairing, your speakers, your groups, your rooms. You can do all of that remotely uh, from, from OpenHab or from SmartThings or from Home Assistant, it's super easy to control. You can even go as far as doing things like if the phone rings or if someone rings the doorbell, uh, mute all your audio and maybe play a bell. So there's little things like that that you can do to add functionality. I also have some announcements. So if someone opens a garage door, I have the speakers announced that a garage is being open. Um, not necessarily all of the time, but if it happened at nighttime or it happened um, in off hours, kind of like times when the garage isn't opening and closing all the time under normal use, uh, I have it do that. It'll also announce things like if I turn, go to turn the alarm on at night and I've left certain doors unlocked or I've left the garage doors open. Bill's garage is currently open. It's going to come on and say, hey, Bill, you know, make an announcement saying that the, the garage door is open. Um, and you can do this using a simple uh, text to voice uh, function that's available in most home automation systems. In uh, OpenHab, it's really simple. You simply just have a command that says say what you want it to say, and you can optionally direct it to what speaker or what group of speakers you want it to go to. Um, obviously around that, you can wrap other parameters, like you could set the volume levels, uh, things like that. So using voice, using audio in your home automation system is a natural way to add some natural feedback and it can be very specific. That way if someone's trying to do something and it's not working, you can go ahead and, and offer voice prompts back to them to say, this is why it's not working. Next step for audio is obviously things like Home Assistant, uh, Google Home Assistant or Alexa. These are uh, definitely going to be the next level. Both of them work right now. They're still in their infancy. Um, so a lot of things work, but we're halfway. So I've been working with Alexa for a while and I find that Alexa is good, but it's very specific. So if you don't get the command, you don't get the device perfect. It kind of says, I'm not sure what you're talking about. 
Google Home on the other side is not quite as supported yet, although the support is coming. I've been testing some stuff with OpenHab recently and it's working really well. Turn on the family room pots. Sure, turning the family room pots on. The thing I like with it is I think the, the power of Google being behind it allows that natural language aspect to really kick in. So you can ask it questions that aren't perfectly phrased or maybe your commands were off a little bit or you called something close to what it is but not quite the same and it tends to pick up on that and know what it is you want to do. So I see a lot of potential coming from that. Now obviously pair this with your home automation where you can ask a question, now you can start to offer up full responses or I mean technically second follow-up questions. You could ask it to do something and it could say would you like to do this as well and, and, and off you go. So that full interactivity isn't there yet but I really see that as the next wave. I mean being able to ask things like that and, and have it respond to you and say well I can't do that right now because of this. Would you like me to do that? And you say yeah sure let's, let's do that. There's also a lot of ways within Sonos especially to set up automations without any third-party software. So if you're working with a Sonos speaker, you can set it to automatically give you a newscast in the morning. You could have it turn on at seven o'clock by reading you the news or the weather or giving you information about your commute to work. So there's some really cool kind of built-in automations you can do right with Sonos and the Sonos app itself. Uh, so if you don't have a home automation set up, you don't use OpenHab, um, it's a great way to start out. You can go out, get yourself one Sonos, one speaker, bring it home. You've got a fantastic little single room speaker. Um, you can do a lot of automations in it, just right in the speaker itself using the, the Sonos software. Um, turning on, turning off, reading the updates, things like that. And then if you want to grow into home automation, you can extend it to work with SmartThings or Home Assistant or OpenHab and you can take your system and you can start to grow it by adding more speakers to it. The one other thing that I'll say just before we, we run with the, the Sonos speakers that I've used and it's personally great is because they're wireless, because all you need is power to get them up and running, very often I've moved them around. So if we're having a party in the backyard, I can take two or three of them out the backyard and really crank up the music and when the party's done, you bring them all back in where they need to be. Um, so the flexibility with them from that level, it's super easy to move. Obviously, you just want to grab that one speaker and move it around. It can be done in seconds, right? So guys, that's pretty much it. Um, audio, fantastic addition. I think that it's one of the places that you can really start to play with. You can do it basic, like I said, music on, music off, different stations. Uh, or it can be something that you can get really in depth with and have lots of responses. Uh, music playing at special times, song playing at special times it can be a lot of fun. So. Check it out. If you haven't already subscribed, do so down below. Guys, that's all I got today, and we'll see you in the next video.